Brothers and sisters, this is the day the Lord has made, and I trust that you are giving God the honor, the glory, and the praise, for he is worthy to be praised. Has he been good to you this week? Come on now, don't fool me now. Has he blessed anybody this week? Is there anybody who's happy to be in the number one more time? Amen, 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 amen. What a mighty God we serve. The Lord is blessing me right now.
about y'all but I need a right now blessing <laughs> and I thank God to be praised and some of y'all have been through some stuff some of us and if the Lord hadn't got us out listen when you come to church you, you got to forget about your suits You gotta, you, you, you gotta stop looking so pretty. This, this ain't no fashion show. No, when you come to God's house, you, you, in order for you to thank him, you gotta think about him. He's worthy, worthy to be praised, worthy to be praised. Amen. Amen. That is who he is. Let us pray. Father, as we open our Bibles to receive what your word has to say, we pray for clarity. We pray for understanding. We pray for enlightenment and information. But above and beyond all that, we pray for transformation. Conform us to your image and your likeness, and we will forever be blessed by you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You heard it you heard it read earlier from the book of Psalm 46 these words verse 10 reads be still and know that I am God I will read it again be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Now if you turn back prior to Psalm, you'll find the book of Job. And then the book of Job chapter 40 you'll find these words Job chapter 40 
From the New King James Version, Job chapter 40, beginning with verse 1, reads, Moreover, the Lord answered Job and said, Shall the one who contends with the Almighty correct him? He who rebukes God, let him answer. Skip down to verse 15. Verse 15 says, look now at the behemoth which I made among all along with you. He eats grass like an ox. See now his strength is in his hips and his power is in his stomach muscles. He moves his tall his tail is like a cedar. The sinews of his thighs are tightly knit. His bones are like beams of bronze. His ribs like bars of iron. He is the first of the ways of God. Only he who made him can bring near his soul. Skip down to chapter 41, verse 1. Can you draw out Leviathan with a hook or snare his tongue with a line which you lower? Can you put a reed through his nose or pierce his jaw with a hook? Will he make many supplications to you? Will he speak softly to you? Will he make a covenant with you? Will you take him as a servant forever? Will you play with him as with a bird, or will you leash him for your maidens? Will your companions make a banquet of him? Will they apportion him among the merchants? Can you fill his skin with harpoon or his head with fishing spears. I want to talk from the title, God All By Himself. God All By Himself. My brothers and sisters, life has many crooks and turns in its road. And God is never more concerned about the road than the destination. God is always more interested in your destination than just your journey. God is never more concerned about the grief in the experience than the glory after the experience. That's why the Bible says, weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Because God is not wrapped up in the detours. He's focused on your ultimate destination. And no matter how great your faith is in life, pain, grief, and suffering are all a part of it. No one is ever exempt in life from troubles, trials, and tribulations. They are designed to help you to stay the course, not to quit. Even in our most pliable and our most compliant state, sometimes we are still ignorant when it comes to knowing and doing the will of God. Her name is Jonah Erickson Tata. Here she was swimming one summer in 1967. She jumped into a body of water, trusting that the water was a certain depth. 
to her dismay, the water was very shallow. She ended up being a quadriplegic for life. Her life was messed up. And during the next two years of her life, she spent her time frustrated about God, about the church, and about everything else that ever happened to her because she never saw what she went through as a blessing. She saw it as a curse. And here she is, quadriplegic. At one time, she was an excellent swimmer, excellent runner, and now she's confined to a wheelchair. God, what did you do to me? God, why did you disappoint me? God, of all the people, why did you let this happen to me? And it's out of wrestling with God and questioning God that she figured out that God had a greater destiny than her dilemma. That God often uses dilemmas to help us to get to our destinies in life. Here's Jonah Erickson Tata now, and she is a Christian going all over the world, telling her story, writing books, and has become a major messenger for Christ through her pain, not through her privileges. Because most of us, C.H. Spurgeon says, that God, that God, most of us write our blessings in the sand, but we write our burdens on marble. And we write our blessings in the sand, but sand blows away the memory of the blessings. And God has kept you up and alive for 360 days, and you can't praise him even in the midst of four days for being sick. And when you add it all up, Paul Jones says, all my good days outweigh my bad days. But we have spiritual amnesia where we forget about all that God has done for us, all of the ways God has helped us, all of the doors that God has opened for us. And the minute one thing goes wrong, we act like God has been So, heartaches, troubles, burdens, they're all a part of life. Never forget, oftentimes in flying, flying from one point to another. When you're smaller, flying from smaller airports, you don't just fly directly. Very seldom do you have a direct flight. Sometimes you have to go way out of the way in order to get to the desti ultimate destination. I could never figure out why would they fly me from Shreveport, Louisiana, all the way to Houston, which is in the opposite direction, just to get me back to Atlanta. But I discovered that there were some people God intended for me to meet in Houston in route to Atlanta. And the journey is bigger than what I think about it. It's all about what God has orchestrated and designed for me. And that's why we have to learn to count it all joy, even when God takes indirect routes in life, because God is not going to always give you a straight shot into glory. Sometimes your route has to come through many dangers, toils, and snares. Notice in the text, Job and his friends have been going back and forth. And they've been arguing back and forth. And you remember Job's wife, Job? Just finish it all. Cuss God and die and be done with it. And you got all these friends who are 
challenging Job on what Job may have done to create this dilemma in his life. Job, what did you do? God didn't just hurt you and break you down like this. What did you do, Job? You had to do something wrong. So watch what happens in the text. Job shows up, and Job begins to contend. Y'all don't know God like I know him. Job begins his final debate in chapter 29. Watch this. Job gets excited over his blessings in the past. Because in chapter 29, you will find, watch this, Job further continued his discourse and said, Oh, that I were as in months past, as in the days when God watched over me. And Job is recalling all of the times when God had hooked them up and blessed him and made a way for him. And Job becomes mesmerized over the good old days. He said, in the good old days, God looked out for me. But chapter 29 turns into chapter 30, and now Job goes from praising God over the good old days to crying over his present situation. And let me remind you, in Job chapter 1, the Bible tells us that everything was wonderful in Job's life, but then the Bible says, but there was a day. And I need to remind all of us that I don't care how high you fly, there will come a day when your faith will be tested, when everything you thought about God and about the church will be put to the test. There will come a day when you can know, you will have to know this, not because grandmama and granddaddy told you, but you will have to know it for yourself. Watch this. And then he goes into chapter 30. He's crying about his present suffering. And he says, although God was gracious to me, although God looked out for me, look at me now. Chapter 31 through 15, he says, nobody respects me. The very people that used to respect me don't respect me anymore because they're able to look at me and they see that I'm cursed. I'm no longer blessed anymore, 16 through 23. I have no help. I have helped others. And now when I need help, there is nobody to come to my rescue. Look at what he says. He's mesmerized and he's spellbound because he says, I don't even have a future, and I don't even have a ministry. And Job is frustrated at this point in his life. How could life turn upside down overnight for me? Well, and running one day, and in the hospital, sick the next day. How? could life turn around in in his book the day test this brother talks about his story with his brother who's a physician and while he's talking about his brother who was a physician his brother who 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 performed hand surgeries over 600 hand surgeries a month and he wakes up one day and he begins to perform surgery on someone's hand and all of a sudden he blacked out. In the middle of operating, his mind went blank. He passed out. He called his friend who was a neurosurgeon and asked to be examined when his friend who was a neurosurgeon saw him. He said, I had to have terrible news for you. You have brain cancer. A man who goes from operating on others to now being operated on himself in a matter of a month. Don't get too comfortable in life. The, the 
don't, don't let nobody fool you. Yeah, I know you got your little house. You got your little car. You got your little stuff. But, but always remember, it ain't yours. And, 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 and never, ever put that stuff before God because at the end of the day, a house and a car and stuff can't help you when you get in this predicament. You don't know it, but you're going to need the Lord one day. And so all of a sudden, he's, he's operating on, being operated on, and there's no cure. Now the physician has become the patient. Now the patient has died. And all these folk like Job's friends are coming up to him saying, I'm with you. I know what you're going through. I'll be there for you. Here's my number. Call me. You know how folk do when you die and and you call them and you can't find them. Are they going to bring their little money and bring their little chicken? But they're going to be there for a little while, and they're going to run on off like folk do. But at the end of the day, only God will be with you from start to finish. And I've come to tell you, the choir sang it earlier, what a friend we have in Jesus. You don't have a better friend than the Lord. But real quickly, this this text helps me to see three quick things. Number one, Job begins to inquire. Lord, what did I do wrong? And he goes down the list in chapter 30. He goes down the list, y'all. Watch this. In chapter 31, he begins to ask the question, look, God, I've looked at myself. Why am I having this problem, these troubles? Verse 5, he asked the question, have I lied on anybody? Have I lied to you? Look at it. Verse 10, he says, have I cheated on my wife? If I cheated on my wife, I could understand why I'm going through this. But I I didn't do that either. Verse 16, he says, when it came to the poor, I looked out for poor people. He goes down the line. Verse 19, I gave clothes away to the naked. Then he says, I don't even have pride. Verse 30, he says, I didn't cuss nobody out. Verse 39, I ain't stole from nobody. And he goes down the line saying, I didn't do this. I didn't do this. I didn't do this. I didn't do this. I did this, 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 and this. And God is saying, I'm not worried about your track record. Because the reason you sometimes are in the predicament you're in is because your own pride. Because you think you are doing everything according to God. And God is saying, no, I'm not after your stuff. I'm after you. And if I have to take your stuff to get you, I will take it. I will shut it down. I will kill it. I will destroy it. Because I don't want nothing getting in the way of my relationship with you. That's what God is saying. You got a job, you get all over time you can get and never give God any time, he'll take it. You don't have to say amen. Listen, it's clear. Here's what God is saying. Job is saying, I've done all these things. God, is there an explanation? Real quickly. God says this, Job, who are you to question me? Let's go to court. <laughs> Job, jo, where, where were you wh- when I spanked the riverbeds and water started running south and they have not yet changed their course? Where were you, Job, when I formed the mountains? Where were you when I slung the stars into their silver sockets? Where were you? When I put the sun in its place and it has not gone down yet, where were you, Job? When I carved out the rivers and carved out the lakes and they fit into place perfectly,
Finally, where were you, Job? If you can't answer this, chill out. Because if you don't know the answer to this, you don't have the answer to what I'm up to in your life. Don't question me. Follow where I lead you because my ultimate goal is not in the journey. It's in your destination. Now, I, 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 want, I want to simply close by telling you this. He says, take a look. Take a look at animals. Watch this. He said, I'm the same God, same God that created puppies. Yeah, and I also created polar bears. I'm the same God. The same God that made apple sweet made lemon sour. I, I'm the same God. I'm the same God that made a sparrow and made a snake. I, I'm the same God that made not only the roses, but I made the thorns in the roses. I'm the same God that took, Lord have mercy, took dust and made you. And I made you the way I wanted you to be, not just with your good stuff, but even with your hookups and hangups. I made you, and I know everything there is to know about you. I know what makes you tick. I know what makes you happy. I know what makes you sad. I know what gets on your nerves. Ain't no surprise when it comes to God. And then he says this, y'all. He says... Look at the behemoth. The behemoth is this ox-like, uncontrollable animal. He said, look at him. He said, Job, who can train this big old ox-like behemoth? Can you force him into your will? Can you make this huge dragon-like animal do what you want it to do? Can you tame him? Can you put him in a zoo and make him obey you? He's a wild behemoth. No. He says to Job, Job, only I can control the behemoth. I made him. I can do with him what I want to do with him. And Job, the same way I can control the behemoth, I control your life. Watch this. Then he says, look at this Leviathan, this sea creature. You can't tell him what to do. No man can control him. Look at nature this week, Florence. The army had to wait until the storm did whatever it was going to do. Then they could come in. Because at the end of the day, God has an inscrutable destiny with your name on it. And he will take you through some stuff that you may not like. And you may not even understand it. And you may not even be able to figure it out. But if you walk with God and trust him, not just through the good stuff, but even through the bad stuff, God will get you to where he wants you to be. I just stopped by to tell somebody, trust in him who will not leave you whatsoever years may bring. If by earthly friends forsaken, still more closely to him cling. Watch this. And what God is saying to Job, Job, it's not about your friends. It's not about your enemies. They couldn't touch you if it wasn't for me. It's not even about the devil in your life. Because he couldn't bother you either. God is saying to Job, Job, I allow certain things in your life because I want you on a certain road and many of us are in church today because of some of the stuff we've been through in life you didn't just volunteer the Lord have mercy some of us pray because trouble make us pray some of us worship because trouble will make you worship 
Some of us are in church because trouble brought you to church. Because when you can't go nowhere else, you can always come to him. I wish I had a witness. I, I wish I had a witness. I wish I could say that I just got up and came on my own, but sometimes trouble brought me here. Sometimes pain got me here. Sometimes when the doctors, Lord have mercy, won't give you your answer, you have to get down on your knees and call on the Lord. And how many of you know if you call him, he will come see about you? If you call him, he will come to your rescue. Do I have a witness in this house? Ask him. And when God gets through with you, you're not going to have to question who helped you. You will know that if it had not been for the Lord, you never would have made it. You want to know why you're here? Because even in the bad stuff, God was still looking out for you. Even when you couldn't see your way, God was still looking out for you. God kept his hand on your life. And that's why you ought to give him praise. And you ought to thank him. Because in the, in the end, he's got you covered. He's got you covered. He's got you covered. He's got you covered. Got you covered. I've had some good days. I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days. And some sleepless nights. But when I, when I look around, and I think things over all of my good days outweigh my bad days I I won't complain God has been so good to me. He's been good to me more than this old world could ever be. He's been so good to me. He drives my tears away turn my midnights into day so I'll just say thank you Lord I I won't complain because God God, God has been so good to me. He's been good to me. More than this old world could ever be. He's been so good, been so good, been so good to He dried my tears away, turned my midnights into day. So I'll just say, thank you, Lord. I'll just say, thank you, Lord. Come on, church. I'll just say I won't complain No, no He tried Tried my Tried my tears 
the way Turn my midnights into day So I just lift my voice and say Thank you, Lord Thank you, Lord Thank you, Lord I won't I won't complain There may be somebody here today I don't know what you're going through But God is not through with you He's not through blessing you He's still working on us But you got to put your life in his hands And if you're here this morning And you know you need the Lord in your life If you're here and you want to renew your faith you can come to the Lord. If you're here, you want to be saved. You know you're not saved. You want to be saved. You want to be sure that heaven is your home. Don't sit in your seat. Come on. The Lord loves you. He's not willing that any should perish, but all come to repentance. If you need a church home, this is the place to be. That's why you're here. If you're here, don't put God off. But let him have his way in your life. If you're here, will you come?